The two questions I get asked most often are, what does Ira Heffler smell like? <laughs> and we solved this traffic problem once and for all. The answers are newborn baby and yes. <laughs> traffic is something which affects each and every one of us. And this is sort of a new problem. You know, it's not like I've had the past 40 or 50 years to identify the problems, work out any sort of solutions. No, no, I remember the morning I woke up and was magically an hour and a half late for work, all because of this mysterious new thing called traffic. It's been like that ever since. It was the September 11th traffic days. I will never forget. <laughs> Look, if we want traffic to get any better in these United States, we are going to have to discuss traffic and advocate some real life solutions. So today, we're going to discuss traffic and advocate some real life solutions. Number one, by discussing some problems. Number two, by identifying some of the causes. And then number three, the best part, I will give you some solutions. <laughs> solutions are the fantasy. Like a unicorn on top of a pegasus galloping up a rainbow chasing a butterfly. They're the women's douche commercial, is what they are. <laughs> Funny thing about that pegasus, you can take the carpool lane. Let's <laughs> identify some problems, shall we? Now besides the general pain in the assness, there are three subsidiary problems to traffic congestion. Number one, or what I like to call the no shit Sherlock problem. According to an article from CNN.com, last updated September 26, 2008, Traffic congestion is the cause of 38 man hours lost per person per year in the United States. That's an entire work week spent just sitting in your car. I and mean, this is essentially time wasted because you could be spending that time doing other things like, I don't know, sleeping or eating or reading a book or taking a shower or jerking off to the Jonas Brothers or something. <laughs> Maybe not that last one, but look, here's the thing. Instead of doing all that fun stuff, you're sitting in a little box listening to some wacky morning DJs crap out the same jokes they've been doing for the past four years. I don't like my speeches. <laughs> Number two, or the ass, grass, or cash, nobody rides for free problem. Now, the definitive research group on ta traffic is the Texas Traffic Institute. Last year, they released their deca, deca annual urban mobility report, which states that every year in the United States, we are wasting 2.5 billion barrels of oil, that's billion with a B, billion barrels just from sitting in traffic. Now this, along with the lost man hours, results in $78.2 billion lost in the economy. $78.2 billion, do you realize how many hookers you can buy for that kind of money? You can buy like $78 billion hookers. Plus a fifth of one more. <laughs> Number three, the Environmental Protection Agency released findings on September 8, 2007. The highway traffic congestion is the cause of 41 million tons of carbon monoxide pollution. Off highway, another 19 million tons. This combines 60 million tons, along with a quarter million tons of ammonia and another 10 million tons of nitrogen oxide, result in 70 million tons of really bad shit. <laughs> kind of like Ashley Scott. You don't know her, but I had sex with her, so that joke is only more for me. <laughs> busting a gut. Okay, causes. There are three causes to traffic congestion. Asians, women, and old people. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm allowed to say that and get away with saying that because I happen to be an asshole. But, according to the Federal Highway Administration, there are seven major causes of traffic congestion. I'm not going to go through all seven right now, because some of them, such as bad weather, there's not a whole lot we can do about that. If it's going to rain, it's going to rain. But other causes, such as bottlenecks, there is something we can do about. Which, according to the FHA, makes up 40% of traffic congestion. Now, most bottlenecks are due to poor road design. In order to illustrate my point, I'm going to show you a picture, but I want you to understand, I have not doctored this image in any way. And I want you to see if you can figure out what the... PCP smoking city planners were thinking when they designed this intersection. <laughs> now, if you want to turn left at this intersection, you are first going to have to turn right, go through here, make a complete 360 degree turn, then another 180 degree turn, come back through here, and eventually make another right. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> but this is a bad idea. Not only because it brings traffic into unnecessary roads, but also because it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. I mean, do we really have to wait for some truck driver at the tail end of a 78-hour meth binge to clip a little girl on her bike before we realize how bad of an idea this is? Roads are not being designed efficiently. 
Now, the second major cause of traffic congestion is something called the ripple effect. And according to author David Strickland in his article, How Traffic Works, the ripple effect is caused when drivers needlessly tap on their brakes. Now, the light that this car emits causes the driver behind him or her to tap on his or her brakes. And so on, and so on, and so on, until eventually you get Carmageddon! <laughs> really more of a visual joke. You gotta see it written down. Karma. Yeah. Fine. Look, here's the thing. This should be simple. This should be an easy fix. It should be a layup. I and mean, this should be as easy as finding a cold sore on any of the team members from Orange Coast College. I mean, this should be simple. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 